everyone and welcome back to another episode of my crazy collection and this time we'll be talking about the xbox one so i got an xbox back when they first came out after seeing a demo of halo running in an electronics boutique of all places fast forward i was straight onto the xbox 360 but when they're starting to give out details about the xbox one i was not sold I did not want to have to use Connect. I did not want to be always connected to the internet. They were saying you won't be able to buy pre-owned games and I was totally and early turned off to the Xbox. That is when I went over to the PlayStation 4. Fast forward many years later, Xbox sorted itself out, got Games Pass, dropped the price and it was Christmas 2019 when I finally got an Xbox One after picking it up cheap for Black Friday. So it's been just over a year since I first got my Xbox One and I've just gone through 100 games. I have 100 games out in my Xbox One collection so I thought to celebrate that milestone I'll jump in to a video for my crazy collection of my first 100 Xbox One games. So I'm going to try and put these into some kind of order, clustering the games together to make it a little bit easier rather than just trying to go through 100 games. So let's jump in, we've got a lot of ground to cover. This right here is the Xbox One I got on that fateful Black Friday. So this is the one terabyte Xbox One S. And this coincided with the launch of Gears of War 5. So you've got digital versions of Gears of War 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in one package. So this would mean it was a really good way to start off having all those Gears of War games available digitally to play as soon as I got the console. The two games that came with the console were Metro Exodus and Forza Horizon 4. Little did I know at the time this was to become not just one of my favourite Xbox One games of all time, not just my favourite racing game of all time, but probably one of my favourite games of all time. The first games we're going to look at from my Xbox One collection are games I will have on any console. They are always a staple of my collection and that is the Lego games. I don't care how old you are, I don't care how black your heart is, these games can bring a smile to anyone's face. So I haven't got quite as many LEGO games you might expect on the Xbox One. That is because I did already play a lot of these on the PlayStation 4. One game that I'll buy over multiple consoles is LEGO Jurassic World. And this is because if you didn't know, Jurassic Park is probably my favourite film of all time. I can play this game any day for any time. I've completed it achievement wise so many times, but it just keeps me coming back. As this is a Dan the Games Man video, you knew there was going to be some wrestling games, so of course I have all the WWE 2K games that are available on the Xbox One. All the way through from 2K15 to 2K20. And yes, I know there is some total stinkers in this set. So the only WWE game I do not have on the Xbox One so far is WWE 2K Battlegrounds. That is because I have that on the Switch. But that game is dropping in price and there is no doubt we'll be adding it to the collection sooner rather than later. The beat em up genre is a genre I'm not massively versed in. And there is a very simple reason for that fact. The fact is I suck at fighting games. So I only have two games in this collection. Marvel vs Capcom Infinite and Tekken 7. Marvel vs Capcom is because I have a very nice special edition of this game which I will do in a separate video and Tekken 7 is just because it was ridiculously cheap at one point but you know I might add more beat em up games to the collection at some point when I actually get better at beat em up games. Of course one of the reasons to buy any console is for the exclusive and it has been a slow time building up but the Xbox One has got quite a few decent exclusive games Crackdown 3 not included in that list. One which really stands out to me here is Quantum Break. This game is really interesting from the people who bought you Alan Wake. So it also incorporates a TV series into the game. So periodically between chapters of the game you can sit and watch a 30 to 45 minute episode of Quantum Break. This is really cool and makes the game really stand out from the crowd. Also, lest we forget, the Xbox One did have Kinect. So Fighter Within is one of the very few games that actually uses the Kinect. But there's also some really good exclusive games for the Xbox One. Rise Son of Rome might be quite an old game now, it might have come from the launch of the Xbox One, but graphically and gameplay wise it is still a very solid game, and one you can pick up super cheap. I really enjoy Killing Zombies, so State of Decay and State of Decay 2 were games I did have to add to my Xbox One collection. Recore again is another game I do have an amazing collector's edition for which I'm going to cover in a separate video just so we're not here for hours upon end. But the game that sticks out for me as one of the best games that are only available on the Xbox One is Sunset Overdrive. 
Seriously, if you've not played this game, you owe it to yourself to check it out. You can get it for under a fiver, and it is an amazing game. Just imagine Tony Hawk's mixed with Saints Row, mixed with a lot of energy drink, and you're only halfway there. It's definitely one you need to check out. We can't talk about the Xbox One without talking about two of arguably the biggest franchises Microsoft have available. That is Gears of War and Halo. So I may have the Gears of War games already digitally, and the Halo collection may be on Games Pass, but it's always good to have these games physical in the collection. One of my favourite developers, who sadly seems to be going the way of the dinosaurs, will always be Telltale Games. And they had some really good games available on the Xbox One, including arguably my favourite of their games, The Wolf Among Us. If you haven't played this game, definitely, definitely check it out. It is like a very, very dark fairy tale and it is well worth looking into, especially for the more mature gamer. Would you look at this poor, sad, lonely copy of FIFA 18? No one loved it. It was just included in a bundle and I feel bad just putting it out onto the street so it can stay here in a safe, loving home. For every console, you have to have some good racing games and there's just a few here. For me, The Crew was a bit of a disappointment, as well as Dangerous Driving was, again, a bit of a disappointment. Dangerous Driving was made by the people who made some of the original Burnout games, but it just hasn't aged very well, and it doesn't really have the staying power of those amazing games. When we talk about the Xbox One, though, and racing games, we have to talk about Forza Horizon. I know as well that it is Forza Motorsport, but I'm not a massive fan of the controls for those games. I kind of prefer the more arcadey feel of the Forza Horizon series, and Horizon 2 and 3, while not as good as Horizon 4, are still amazing racing games. Also, Wreckfest is worth a mention because the damage in that game is incredible. It is so realistic, the destruction derby style of racing, especially when you do it with some of the massive motorhomes and school buses. Some more open world games which receive a lot of flack, and that is both Assassin's Creed and the Fallout series. So say what you want about Fallout, but I am still a massive fan of the franchise. I even enjoy Fallout 76, so, you know, if you haven't been back to it recently, it's worth checking out. Also, when it comes to Assassin's Creed, I do have two copies of Syndicate, just because it's one of those games that will often turn up in a bundle, and it's cool to have the variant. One of the largest parts of my collection is the first person shooter collection. And there is so many good games available for the Xbox One, even though a lot of these are also available on the PlayStation 4. Especially shout out to Bulletstorm. It is a game that if you missed it back in the Xbox 360 and PS3 days, this HD remaster is well worth checking out and is super cheap. Three of the biggest names in first person shooters been Borderlands, Doom and Wolfenstein. These are classic games, and I have lost count of the number of hours I've put in on Borderlands, and I plan to put a lot more in for now. Love them or hate them, there will always be Call of Duty games in anyone's gaming collection. So I actually have four on the Xbox One, that's because a lot of these I already played on the PlayStation 4, but I really do think it is a series of games that is progressively getting worse. I actually tried to play through Call of Duty Black Ops 3 recently, got about halfway through and just put it back on the shelf. I think the story is absolutely abysmal. Here we have some more first person shooters which will turn up in any bundle of games you pick up cheap. Trust me on that. Actually recording this video I realised I had another copy of Battlefield Hardline. I really do not know what they were thinking when they made Battlefield Hardline. Going from a war zone into playing as a policeman just did not work. The multiplayer was weird. There were still RPGs and helicopters, but it just fell off. Out of these games, I would say you have to play Titanfall 2. It is a game that does not get as much recognition as it deserved. It came out the same time as Battlefield 5 and one of the many Call of Duties, and it just kind of got lost in the way. But out of those three games, it stands heads and tails above the competition. We're getting into some of the more random games in the collection now that don't really fit into any kind of genre. So the one I think that stands out here is Warhammer the End Times Vermintide. So if you kind of imagine a Warhammer pasted Left 4 Dead, you're about halfway there. This game gets manic online, it's definitely worth checking out for multiplayer. Here we have some kind of action open world adventure games. So obviously the Tomb Raider series is one I've mainly played on the PlayStation 4 even though originally Rise of the Tomb Raider was exclusive to the Xbox One. 
If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, Shadow of Mordor is a lot better than Shadow of War, to be honest. The Batman games are always classic, but out of these, I would highly, highly recommend Mad Eater. I have spoken about it before on the channel, and I will keep speaking about it until enough people play that game. Chris Farnell in that game is absolutely amazing as a narrator. It is violent, it is gory, it is free roaming fun, and for goodness sake, you get to play as a shark. What more do you want? Blazing Angel, Squadrons of World War II and Elite Dangerous are both games which are optimised to play with the Hori Thrustmaster controller. This thing is an absolute beast and it really makes these games so much more in depth. It adds so much more realism using this stick to control it. It is a really cool piece of kit. I actually managed to pick this up for a really good price. Some of these flight sticks are really expensive. I managed to pick this one up cheap and it makes these games so much better. Likewise to what I said about the fighting games earlier, I am also pretty bad at platformers. That's why Crash Bandicoot has stayed on the shelf rather than making me smash the controller. So also look at these games, there's some quite random ones here. Victor Van Overkill Edition is kind of a game set in the world of Motorhead, so if you're a metalhead it is well worth checking out. Also Devil May Cry 5 is a game that too many people passed up. It's been put on the PlayStation 5 and optimised for the Xbox One Series X, so there's no excuse, you should check it out, it's definitely one that's underrated. So again, we have some weird games here, and you would think that Farming Simulator 15 would be the weirdest, but no, that definitely goes to 8 to Glory. As you probably cannot tell by the cover of this game, it is actually a bull riding game. Yes, there is a market for bull riding games. This was very, very cheap on the game collection. I think it was under £3. I literally just had to pick it up for the absolute walk of it. If you didn't know, I'm a massive fan of South Park, but I could not tell you which one of these games I preferred because they both have their own merits. If you're more of a fan of Lord of the Rings, stick to the Stick of Truth. If you prefer your Marvel DC, go for the Fractured Butthole. Also, some Final Fantasy. These games here are two of the most expensive games for my Xbox One collection. So in the case of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I think this is because Disney have bought the rights to pretty much everything in the world. So this game probably lost its license very quickly. With Fortnite, you may be surprised to hear, but the disc version of this game is getting very, very expensive. I expect it's because it had a very limited run of copies and probably not a lot of people bought a game which could be downloaded for free off most stores. So, if you see this in a bundle or see it cheap, pick it up. If for no other reason, these copies are going very expensive on eBay. We're coming to the end of the video, but there's still time to talk about a couple of my favourite steelbooks I have for the Xbox One. So I really do like a good steelbook. I wouldn't really go out of my way to pay extra for one, but it's kind of cool when they come included in a pre-order, or you just get a special edition that has a steelbook. These are the last of my games for the Xbox One and the last three steelbooks. I especially like the Wolfenstein the New Colossus box. That propaganda art style is kind of cool even though it is kind of scary. This one also comes with a collector's edition which I'm going to be showing you in a separate video. So there we have it guys. Just over a year of collecting for the Xbox One and a hundred games in the collection already. It's quite interesting now, as the Xbox Series X is slowly taking over for the Xbox One, it'll be interesting to see what the price of games does. But, in my eyes, now is the time to start grabbing games for the Xbox One. Those prices are going to be dropping exponentially, and the thing is, it's better to buy cheap than wait for when people are collecting for it later down the line. Again, thank you for watching this episode of My Crazy Collection. It's not very often I'm going to go through an entire collection for an entire console. So I hope you've stuck with me to the end of this video. If you have, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please remember to like this video. It really helps the channel. And let me know, how big is your Xbox One collection? Or is it a collection you're hoping to build over the coming years as the prices drop? So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's interesting to you to see what I have in my collection. But for now, I'm back to gaming. So keep playing the game. Catch you soon.